Imagine, if you will, a video dedicated to the horror of the vastness of space, the great void between worlds, and the terrifying thought that we may not be alone in this universe, or perhaps the scarier thought that we are. Now imagine a YouTube video focused on a small Italian plumber exploring these vast galaxies. There is no need to imagine, because you have just entered Spooktober with special guest Capture Reviews. This is where the screen goes black. Why Why the f*** is there stock footage of a- Oh my god, is that supposed to be Flood? F***ing hell, our budget is sh Oh, oh, that's where the budget went. Your precious f***ing green screen. No, I get it, I get it. I'm just the guest. Big strong hose with the big bucks. Sure, okay. So with the Mario 3D All-Stars collection being a collection of two games that are a blast from the past, I think you and I should take a game each. Hey. Love it. However, just, just a counter argument here. Stop me if I'm crossing any lines. I don't want to go too far. Here's the thing though. Um, there's three games. There are. So do we do we kind of like I don't <laughs> Oh! I've got an idea. Maybe we could do the third game on your channel. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. I'd love to. <laughs> Great idea. You're a genius. I mean, that's why they pay you the big bucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we already did that like two weeks ago. What the f*** is this guy on? What? Nope, no, you're good. You're, you're killing it. Keep going. So, this is Super Mario Galaxy. A game all about confusing controls and commuting across the cosmos to save the captured Princess Peach. And this is Super Mario Sunshine. A game all about cleaning up what was once a tropical paradise in order to save the kidnap- Oh, are you f***ing kidding? Nintendo really does like to tell that one story over and over again, don't they? <laughs> well, you know what they say, if it ain't broke, cram it down the f***ing throats of your fans over and over! Speaking of being broken, in Super Mario Galaxy, Bowser has stolen the Power Stars from the Comet Observatory and used them to create his own galaxies. It's up to this well-known plumber to traverse these galaxies, defeat Bowser, and return the stars to the observatory, all in the name of saving the princess. But by trade, Mario is a plumber, not an astronaut, so how will he go about this insurmountable task? Well, with help from the Loomers. What's a Luma? No idea. But Mario has one inside of his hat. I feel like I've heard this one before. Anyway, with their help, Mario has a new move. The spin jump. Which lets him gain a little bit of height at the end of his jumps. It also lets him use these Luma launch stars, which are what allow Mario to travel across these galaxies. These galaxies are rather small for galaxies. I mean, sometimes they're just individual planets. Other times they're, at most, a small cluster of meteors. And at worst, floating health code violation. As for the gameplay, it's what you'd expect from a 3D Mario game. You enter a level to collect a specific star in this obstacle course-like level. Collect the star, you've done the level. Its gimmick this time is being that your course is based around jumping from various rocks, flying through space, and navigating through this strange gravity, and avoiding the oddly high number of black holes. Don't these things like devour everything near them? Oh god, Mario, look out! <laughs> For Mario Sunshine, Mario and his crew are on their way to the sun-drenched paradise of Isle Delfino. But once they get there, all is not well. And there's a bunch of, and I'm directly quoting here, icky paint-like goop? Yeah. And Mario himself has been framed! Now, Mario and his new water-based jetpack companion Flood must clean Delfino and get to the bottom of this. And, of course, they have to save Princess Peach for fuck's sake, it's supposed to be our vacation! <laughs> Wahoo, yippee, <laughs> to me, <laughs> this. Mario traverses all of the wonderful things this island has to offer while cleaning up the goop, defeating enemies, and collecting shines. 
Shines are this game's version of stars, and, of course, they're required to open up more areas filled with more goop and more slander and libel. Where is my lawyer? I didn't do shit. Using Flood, Mario can spray, jetpack, turbo run on water, and launch himself all about the island while tidying things up. Sure, there are some times where Flood is taken from you, but all in all, this is Mario 64 with a nice new twist to keep things interesting. And now, you can experience this wonderful world in a gorgeous 1080p. Hello 2007! Sunshine, like the other games in 3D All-Stars, has seen a wonderful improvement in colors, textures, and just overall looks from its original release, and it's amazing. It runs in 720p on handheld, but even still, with the other improvements like how bright and vibrant the colors are, it hardly stood out and the game still is a beaut. I will say though, there were some moments of frame rates dropping a bunch, but that might be because it's how it ran on the GameCube, and this is just an emulation of that. And as for Super Mario Galaxy, well, it was 1080p back then, and it's still 1080p now. But it's also portable, in which case it's 720p. <laughs> but it's still an improvement, the gameplay is incredibly smooth. And in my time with it at least, I didn't come across any major issues with frame rate. However, being portable does lead to some frustrations in game where you have to point at the screen to collect star bits and shake the controller to do Mario's spin jump. And I'm sure you can see the issue with shaking the controller where your controller is the console when you're trying to do incredibly precise platforming. Just in case you can't see the issue, here is a dramatic visualization. Try to focus on this. But the big brains over at Nintendo did have a solution. You see, the Switch does have a few more buttons on it than the old Nintendo Wiimote, so there's an entire button dedicated to the spin jump. But that's not my only issue with the handheld version of playing this game, because the only way of collecting star bits, or aiming where you shoot them, is to use the touchscreen. Now as I am a large man with rather large hands, touching the screen and platforming also offers its own set of trials and tribulations. Trying to look where you're going with my meaty hands in the way is almost impossible. And let's not forget that you have to take a hand off of the console that you're using to navigate to touch the screen. So you have to dedicate a specific chunk of time to collecting the star bits instead of, say, jumping or spin jumping. Now, I do understand why they've done it this way, and I couldn't think of a better way of doing it, but it's just not designed for this console, and it shows. It's not terrible. It's just kind of a little cumbersome. I think the best method for playing this game was the two individual Joy-Cons, but a lack of the sensor bar meant that I had to constantly re-center the pointer, which again was a problem with porting it over from one console to another. Despite that being the best way to play, I found myself using the Pro Controller a hell of a lot more. And another thing, can we talk about how uncomfortable the Switch is for really, really Okay, big buddy, shut up. It's I mean, my turn to I... talk. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> when comparing docked and handheld controls for Sunshine, there really isn't a difference. Both controls work wonderfully well, except for one major issue that I have. The Switch doesn't have pressure-sensitive triggers, and the GameCube controller did. So, in the original Sunshine, you could slightly press down on the R button to run and gun with Flood, and hold it down to shoot while standing still. That can't be done on the Switch, so the solution was to make R the stand and shoot button, and ZR the run and gun button. This is kind of annoying, and I wish it had been ZR as automatically run and gun, but if you hold that and R, it would be stay and shoot, but alas, I never get my way. Fucking full English still doesn't have my coffee from the last video. Fucking idiot. But is the mic still on? It was a bit of a nuisance getting the hang of the new controls, and I still frequently found myself using ZR from muscle memory and promptly messing things up a bunch. I'll put it like this. If you're a returning player, you're going to struggle with the change at first, mostly due to muscle memory, but to a new player, this should not be an issue and you'll be good to go. Now as a young lad, I played the living shit out of Mario Sunshine, so when I saw that it was coming to the Switch, I got so excited and had such high expectations. Obviously, it's the same game with minor improvements here and there, but I hadn't played this game in years, so I was so excited to relive the good old days and experience one of the top games of my childhood. So, how did it hold up? Well, to be honest, it held up tremendously. 
all the little parkour type tricks you can do with Flood, the catchy soundtrack, and even my favorite glitches made it into this game. Like this! What the f*** is happening here? I don't know, but I love it! I've heard some people say that Sunshine is a weak game and it's not a true successor to 64, and if you think that way, I swear, I'm going to f funnel you some love, because we all deserve some love, right? It's a good f***ing game. Along with this, playing Sunshine after playing 64 is a huge relief. The camera in this game actually f***ing works, and Mario's movements are so much more fluid and so much fun to mess around with. I also found that now as an adult with a child's vocabulary and vulgar language, this game is perfect for playing in short bursts when you're busy. Most levels can be finished very quickly, which is really nice for a console like the Switch that you can take with you on the go. Also keep in mind, I said most levels. Most. Levels. Most. Levels. Now, the last time that I played Super Mario Galaxy was way back when it was released. I do have fond memories of playing Super Mario Galaxy instead of doing homework, but going into this I had absolutely no idea what to expect. As the last Mario game that I played before this was Mario 64, and before that, Mario Odyssey. The very first and the very latest Mario games. So I guess this kind of coming out in the middle of those, I kind of expected a middling experience. It's come some way since Mario 64, but it didn't have the same degree of flexibility that Odyssey had. But in reality, there was actually so much uniqueness to it that I very, very clearly wasn't expecting. Some things came from this game that seemed to then inspire the later games. Look at the Sweet Sweet Galaxy and the Luncheon Kingdom, for example. It is a very creative game, with an overarching story that we've heard many times before. But the individual, smaller stories are a bit more interesting. Say, saving Luigi from a haunted mansion. What a twist. <laughs> and then there's just following the adventures of Captain Toad. This being his first appearance before he got his own game later on. Now here's a question for you. Not you, you. If you were suggesting a Mario game to someone for their Switch, but they could only afford one, which would you suggest they buy? I will say, if you had to choose between this collection and Mario Odyssey, take Mario Odyssey. Yes, these three games are wonderful and amazing in their own right, but keep in mind, Odyssey was made for the Switch. Every level and moment takes advantage of the new hardware and features of the Switch, while these old games are just running on an emulator. Again, these three games are great, but for a newcomer to the Switch, get Mario Odyssey first. You'll appreciate this system more once you see what it truly has to offer. Yeah, I think I'd have to agree with you there. If you want to experience these old Mario games, then this collection is a fantastic way of doing that. But if you're looking for a better Mario experience on the Switch, then I'd have to say that Odyssey is the better overall experience. But with that being said, do you think the Mario 3D All-Stars collection is worth buying? Yes. 3D All-Stars is a great emulator of three top-tier games that are all amazing and have to be experienced by a gamer. 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy are all 10s in my book and really showcase Nintendo's ability and willingness to successfully try out new ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video, but please before you go, go and give Capture Reviews some love. Go look at his channel that I'm subtly hinting at in the corner I do, <laughs> it's just occurred to me now that I don't know which corner it is. In the corner, he has been absolutely amazing to work alongside and it has been a ton of fun getting to know this genuinely wonderful human being who also makes reviews on video games. And let me see if I've got this right. Go Tigers. Seriously, go give him some love, go check out his channel. It's absolutely worth it. But that's it for this video. If you've liked it, don't forget to like it. If you want to see more stuff, just mostly kind of like this, but with just me and not him, then consider subscribing. If you want more of him, go subscribe to him. Subscribe to us both, it's worth it. And until next time, did you know I'm English? Cheerio.